Hello again, my name's John and welcome to part 2 and the final part of my in-depth pork pie videos. In this demonstration I'll be making a couple of individual pork pies but obviously I'll only be shown one as they're both the same and I'll also be making a gala pie. That's the pie with the boiled eggs running through the middle of it. And as far as I know it's also known as a Grosvenor pie but I prefer to call it a gala pie. It's easier to spell and it's quicker to say. And a quick recap. This is where I left off in part one. I have the pastry made and the meat prepared and both were put in the fridge overnight. And it is now the next day. As I mentioned a while back, I'll be making a hand raised pork pie. And this is what you need to make one. It's called a pie dolly. And the pie case is formed by manipulating the pastry around it. It's easier to show you rather than try to explain. You can use a substitute like a jam jar or a wine bottle, but if you're keen on making pork pies in the traditional way, you should definitely invest in a pie dolly. You can pick them up pretty cheap online, about £6 sterling, which is around $10. OK, if your pastry has been in the fridge overnight like mine, take it out an hour before you start the pies and let it get a bit closer to room temperature. It will be easier to work with that way. And let's get started on the first pie case. Now weigh off 200 grams, that's 7 ounces of the pastry, and form it into a puck shape like you see in the video. Give the dolly a good dusting of flour to prevent any sticking. Now centralise the dolly over the pastry and press lightly with a wiggling motion until the pastry starts to extrude from the bottom. Then I'll start manipulating the pastry from the bottom up, starting with my little fingers and gradually working my way up like you see in the video. The dolly is also designed to be turned upside down too. You should also add flour at regular intervals to prevent sticking. Also, by pressing down with your thumbs on the shoulder of the dolly will keep the pressure on the base of the pastry case while slowly raising the pastry up with your fingers, hence the name hand raised pork pies. Now the base of the pie case should be the same thickness as the sides when you're finished. And like I said earlier, it's easier for you to see how it's done rather than me try to explain it. Once you get the hang of it, it's quite easy. Now you can keep practicing on the same piece of pastry over and over again until you get it right. Now take 50 grams of the pastry, that's just under 2 ounces, and form the lid like I have in the video. Now find something a little larger than the top of the pie in your kitchen so you can cut out the shape of the lid. And it's easier to put the hole in the lid now rather than when the pie's together. Now I'm using my thin sausage nozzle to do mine, I'm sure you'll find something appropriate to do yours with. If you're not keen on making these pork pies the traditional way with the dolly, you can always use non-stick moulds like this muffin tin. I make my mini pork pies in this one and they turn out great. Now under the gala pie pastry. I'll be using this loaf tin and its inside dimensions are 21.5 cm, that's 8.5 inches long, 11.5 cm, that's 4.5 inches wide, and six and a half centimetres that's two and a half inches deep. This is a job you can do well in advance and that is to boil and peel four eggs for the gala pie. To prevent the eggs from cracking start them off in cold water and slowly bring them to a boil and then start the timer for seven minutes just as the water begins to boil. Now there's quite a bit of fat in this pastry and it shouldn't stick to the tin but just to make sure I'll grease the tin with a little lard just to be on the safe side. 
Right, to start the base of the gala pie, take 400 grams, that's 14 ounces of the pastry and roll it out as shown. The finished thickness of the pastry should be about 4mm, that's around 3 sixteenths of an inch. Just don't have it too thin. Carefully get it into the tin without breaking through it. If you do, repair the hole with some pastry and water to seal it. The last thing you want is for the liquid to leak through the pastry while it's cooking in the oven. To trim the edges you can't really use a knife as there's no backing to cut against. I've found kitchen scissors are the best option for this job. Now I leave plenty of overhang so I can seal the lid and make a nice pattern later. Once you've done the base, use all of the pastry that's left to roll out a rectangle for the lid as shown. Then we can get on with filling the pies. You may have noticed that I had to do a little repair work on mine. If you have long nails, try rolling up a little ball of pastry and use that to press the pastry into the corners of the tin. It works great. You can also pre-prepare some decoration to finish off the pie like I've done. But just use your creative imagination, there's no rules. This isn't one of my strong points by the way. Right, now it's time to start putting in the filling and sealing the edges. Begin by getting 200 grams, that's 7 ounces of this wonderful pork mix. Roll it into a ball and traditionally you're supposed to throw it into the pie case. This expels the air from the bottom of the pie, that's the theory anyway. This pie needs a little more meat, so I'll put another 50 grams in, that's about an ounce and a half. Once the meat's in, then I'll put the lid on and seal the edges with water. And for presentation purposes, once the lid's on and sealed, try to give the edges a bit of a nice traditional scallop type pattern. You'll need a greased non-stick baking tray to cook them on. And the very last job before it goes into the oven is to give it a good egg wash all over. This will make the pie a nice golden brown and give the finished pie a bit of a shine. Now these pies are pretty robust so don't be frightened to pick it up in your hands and give it a good coat of the egg wash. Right, that's one individual pork pie done. I'll do the other one off camera and now I can get on with putting the gala pie together. Before starting the gala pie, preheat the oven to 200 degrees Celsius, that's 400 degrees Fahrenheit or gas mark 6. I'm setting mine to 180 degrees Celsius as my oven is fan assisted and it runs 20 degrees Celsius hotter than indicated on the dial. Ok, I need 900 grams altogether of the meat mix to fill this pie. You may need more or less, depending on what size tin you use. Start by filling up the pie case as shown. Don't pack it in too tight. Fill it up halfway but build up the edges a little to form a sort of trench to put the eggs in. When you start to add the eggs, cut off the ends so they butt up together, like I'm doing in the video. Okay. 
Don't be tempted to eat those discarded ends. Remember you have raw meat on your hands. I mention it because it's easy to forget. Now start to fill up the rest of the pie with the remainder of the meat as shown. Then I can start putting on the lid. I hope you can see that I'm not pressing too hard on the meat. I'm only doing it lightly. You don't want to compact it too much as it will shrink some in the oven and that's ideal because we need to get some jelly in later. And if you don't like the jelly in, like my lot, then just leave it out. And if you are leaving out the jelly, then you can pack it in a little firmer, but not too much. Before putting the lid on, give the edges of the base and around the edge of the lid a good brush with plenty of water, as the pastry could well be starting to dry out a little by now, so work as quickly as possible. I'm not sure where to locate the vent holes at this stage, so I'll have to wait until the lid's on in this case. Now nip the two edges together quite firmly. You don't want it to burst open in the oven. Then, like I said earlier, you can get creative with the edge pattern and the decoration on the top of the pie. And once again, I'll mention this isn't one of my strong points these days, but I'll do the best I can. Now that the lid's on, you need two ventilation holes in the top and once again I'm using my skinny sausage making nozzle to do mine. These holes will also be used for pouring the jelly into the pie. Right, I'll keep quiet a while and turn up the music while you watch this masterpiece come together. Not. I don't think the bunch of grapes are supposed to go there, but it looks okay. Vincent van Gogh's work was classed as rubbish in the beginning, you know. Well, there you go. It isn't too bad, is it? But, one thing's for sure, it won't spoil the great taste of these pies. Right, now I can give the whole of the top a good coat of egg wash, and then it's time to get these pies into the oven. Great, now I can't leave it alone. Put all three pies in the preheated oven and as a reminder the temperature is on the screen and set the timer for 20 minutes. After the 20 minutes are up, turn the pies around, then reduce the temperature to 170 degrees Celsius, that's 340 Fahrenheit, or gas mark 3, and set the timer for 50 minutes this time. But that's only for the small pies. The gala pie will need another 20 minutes at least on top of that. Ok, after the 50 minutes are up, take out the small pies because they are done and I'm going to give the garlic pie a further 30 minutes at the same temperature to make sure it's cooked right through. That certainly looks cooked, but a pity about the leakage. But you always get that with these pies, it's pretty inevitable, but it's all part of the homemade look. 
Right, just to be on the safe side, I'll check the internal temperature. Now the recommended safe internal temperatures are 71 degrees Celsius, that's 160 Fahrenheit, but I'm hoping for a much higher rating than that with this pie. And there you go, well into the 90 Celsius, which is over 200 Fahrenheit, so I can guarantee that the meat is well cooked in this pie. Okay, it's about an hour later and the pies are still slightly warm and it's now time to add the jelly. And like I said earlier, you don't have to do this step, but it is traditional. I'll start by soaking one of these gelatin sheets in some cold water to soften it up a bit. You can get the crystallised form too, just follow the instructions on the packet. Now in the pan I have a couple of hundred grams, that's about 7 ounces of water and I simply dissolve a good quality chicken stock cube into it. I'll bring it to a boil, then add the gelatine sheet after squeezing the excess water out of it and just mix it into the hot stock. I normally use a little plastic funnel to guide the stock into the pie, but it seems to have gone missing. So I'll put some of the stock in this little jug and hopefully don't spill too much of it. I'll have a paper towel handy, just in case I do spill any. I like to poke a couple of small holes in the top of the hand raised pies to let the air escape as the stock goes in. <laughs> Steady does it. I'll try that again. It's all part of the fun of cooking. There's quite a bit already gone in, but I'll try a little more. I'll just do the one small pie, because like I said earlier, my lot are not keen on the jelly. Right, now for the big one, and hopefully this one will be a bit easier. If I ever stop shaking, that is. Once it starts to show in the other hole, that means the pie is just about full. Now keep an eye on the opposite side of the pie and wait for the liquid to come through that hole. And there it is. That means the liquid is filled right up to the top of the pie. Right, now they have to go into the fridge so the jelly will set. And I usually do that overnight. Now I'll let you see what they're like on the inside tomorrow. Right, it's the next morning and I'll start with the small pie first. Now I'm saying small pie, but these are quite large really. After cooking they seem to squat down and spread out. And considering the pie dolly is only 3 inches in diameter, this pie has ended up 5 inches wide. And there it is on the inside. And believe me, they really are delicious. With the lean meaty chunks and that traditional peppery flavour and that wonderful hot water crust pastry. Well worth the effort. Now onto the big gala pie. This is always the worrying bit. Will it or won't it come out of the tin in one piece? If it does get stuck, it'll only be somewhere around the top of the pie. So carefully run a thin bladed knife around the edge. Sometimes the egg wash sticks it up a bit. But take your time, it'll come out in the end. And there you go, out it pops. And it doesn't look like there's any leakage on the inside of the tin. It seems that the pastry is dry all the way around. Right, it's time to cut this one open and see what it's like on the inside. Now, I'm the unluckiest bloke on the planet when it comes to cutting through a yolk bit in these pies. I'll have to figure out how they make those continuous eggs in the commercially produced pies. 
there, what did I tell you? Unbelievable. Right, I'll try again. See if it works this time. But I'm not hopeful. And no yolk again. Well, maybe a little bit. Right, I'll get a slice on the plate and give it a taste. Even though it's cold, it smells fantastic. The pastry is nice and crisp on the outside and soft and moist on the inside, just like a good pork pie pastry should be. And finally, I found a bit of yolk, so I'll try that middle bit. And it has a fantastic flavour. Just the right amount of herbs, it almost tastes like a pork sausage stuffing with the sage that's in it. And after that, you get a very pleasant heat from those peppers. Wonderful flavours. And this one definitely gets a thumbs up. Well, that's about all there is for this one. I've given you the basic recipe, but there's nothing stopping you adapting it to suit your own ideas and tastes. Like changing the herbs and spices around, for example, or adding herbs to the pastry, using wholemeal flour. There's lots of ways you can customise the recipe. Food for thought, in other words. Well, thanks again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. That way you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. In the meantime, here's a few of my other videos you may want to watch. So, until the next time, bye for now.